Right, so what, last time we looked at the five, the first five axioms for Sermeno Franklin set theory, and one of them for the union axiom, we used um, a preliminary version, a, a version that was simpler, uh, just so we could list them all. Let's look at the actual version of the uh, uh, union axiom. So the union axiom we had before allow us to uh, union two sets together, right? And forming a set that contains the elements of both of them at the same time. Now we want the union axiom that's going to allow us to union any number of sets uh, that we have. So this is what the general form says. It says that if you have a set A, think of this set A as a set that contains sets, and we want to union those sets together. So the axiom says that given such a set, there is another set whose members are those belonging to the sets inside A. Okay, so we're unioning all the sets that are inside A. So we're going to write this as follows. So given this set A, we can find the set B that we call the union, whose members are all the X's that belong to some little A that belongs to A, to capital A. All right? So these little A's are the sets that are members of A, and now we look at the X's that are inside those, and we put them all together inside one set that we call B. All right? So we're going to denote this by union A. It's so one big capital U for union for of a set of sets. Okay? And so we can, re we can say what you just said in uh, different words. Essentially what we said is that the members of union A are exactly the members of the members of A. Right? That's what the union of A. You take the members of A and then you take the members of those. Let's do an example. So suppose that A is a set that contains many sets to three, one, three, one, and five. A is a set that contains three sets now. And now if you do the union of A, we are unioning all these three sets together. So we are going to get two, three, one, and five. Essentially, it's like removing all those brackets from there, except that the sets can be a bit more complicated. Uh, but does it make sense? We are putting all these sets together, right? So this is the same thing, this set union, this set union, three, one, five. All right, so we're just unioning all the sets inside A together into one set. This is going to be interesting when we have an infinite family of, an infinite set of sets and then we want to union all of those together. Uh, the operation that we had defined in the previous video doesn't work here because that was only to union two sets, well, you can use it again to union a third set and a fourth set, but if you want to go to infinite sets, you need to use this general form. Okay, let's just make another uh, interesting example. What if you take the union of the empty set? So the empty set has no sets inside, and we're putting all of those together what are we going to get? We're going to get the empty set, of course. There is nothing inside. There are no members of members of this set. Okay, so the next step will be to define the intersection. Now we want to see how we define the intersection. Okay, so given a set A, we're going to define this set like a general intersection, like we just did. We define that symbol up there. It's a big uh, upside down U for intersection. Um, to be the intersection of all the sets, all the sets in A. So that is, the members of this intersection are going to be exactly the X's that belong to all members of A at the same time. All right, so they are the, the ones that belong to set A for all A's in A. Okay, so we have to put them all together. All right, so the union is it the ones that belong to some set in A, and these ones belong to every set in A. Good? So, questions for you guys. Uh, for the union, we have an axiom that says that this union exists. What about the intersection? Uh, can we prove that intersection of A exists? Um, or do we need an axiom for this? 
Well, the answer is that we're not going to have an intersection axiom, but we're going to have, but it's going to follow from another axiom called the subset axiom that we're going to see next. So this needs the subset axiom. Okay, let's just see a quick example uh, to see how this intersection works. Suppose we're going to take the intersection of the set that contains the following three sets. Uh, 2 comma 3 that we have used in every, in every class uh, let's say 2 comma 5 and 3 5 7 and 2 what is the intersection of these three sets together, right? So the notation is you just put the big intersection up here and then that means the intersection of those three sets that belong there. Uh, so these are the members, the things that belong to all of them. Like three doesn't belong to all of them and five doesn't belong to all of them. The only one that belongs to all of them is two. So we get that this is the set that contains only two. See you guys next time.